grew up in London for the first five years of my life, then came to Ireland at five and stayed there till I was married 25 with my great aunt and uncle, Mr. and Mrs. William McCoy. <laughs> And uh, my uncle was the accountant for the newsletter under the Henderson group. Mm -hmm. So I had a very happy life with them. The war began '39. I remember uh, standing in the sitting room in Orby Drive and looking out and a storm had come up and it occurred to me how ominous that was on such a day. I had thought of joining the Wrens, but my circumstances were that I couldn't have left my aunt and uncle who were then in their 70s and so that was that. And I don't know how I heard about it, but I recollect somebody saying, a Mr. Goldstein is recruiting amateur singers and dancers and magicians and compares from around Belfast. And I cannot remember how I even met Mr. Goldstein, but I did. And he recruited me then to go and join this ENSA group. They used the local people because the people, the bona fide ENSA people, were being used abroad and kept in England and nobody was coming here to entertain the services, the troops here. So we were all recruited by the time things were set up and we went all over the north of Ireland in the camouflaged bus painted green and black so nobody would know it was there really. Yeah. Mr and Mrs Miller, he was the compare, his wife, they had a little girl, a very talented child indeed who was nearly a replica of Shirley Temple. And indeed I thought equally as good and was a great success with them, with the troops. We'd army and air force, not navy, I don't know why we. I was soprano and I sang Shine Through, <laughs> Shine Through My Dreams. And the look, you know, at that time in London, there were lots of, of good musical companies with the latest uh, songs, and I tried to sing those. And I had a friend, a well, I made a friend of him after, um, his name was Fred, can't remember his surname. Do you remember, he had a grocer shop. I better not say where. <laughs> But now and again, he would bring me a little half pound of butter, which was just magic, because I brought it home from Ireland. And uh, I think subsequently, after the war, he was a very good tenor. He emigrated to Australia. We had subsequently a very famous magician by the name of Billy McComb, whose parents owned the Carlton in Donegal Place in Belfast. And Billy was meant to do medicine, but his heart was in the magic world. Also at that time, in Belfast, we had the first beauty queen, June Cochrane. She was a beautiful girl 
and Billy fell in love with Jude. And she came as his sidekick, you know, magic assistant. And they subsequently married. But Billy became very famous in London, indeed. He became very respected in the magic circle in London. So that was Billy. We had troupe dancers, mm -hmm. Sammy and Jean. They were married. And Sammy had been a solo dancer, but Jean really loved to dance, so he taught her. And they had in our group a uh, spot uh, that they did a whole thing. And then Sammy would do some solo, and Jean would do some solo work. We also had a girl from Bangor, Kernan, and a chap she did some elocution with. You recollect a poem, The Green Eye of a Little Yellow God, and that was their big moment. So they made a whole play around that. And in between, Mr. Miller did his fun house. Oh, we had a lovely Ivy Bingham, the most beautiful pianist, which helped singers enormously. If you have a good accompanist, you're home and dry. And she was just that. And then we had another young man, I think he was bass, and he, was, he would only have been about 19. Bonnie boy he was, can't remember his name. And an accordionist who was outstanding, don't remember his name either. But we had a, a really good group and uh, there were other breakaway groups who formed dancing troops and at the end they would have joined us to make it a bigger event.